Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Jamie Trent here. Okay, so this month we're still continuing to talk about the basics of health. So I'm going to be focusing the next few weeks on the macronutrients. So what are those? Those are going to be fat, protein, and carbohydrates. So those are kind of the nutrients that we need in large amounts in our diet. So compared to micronutrients, which are going to be minerals and things that we need in smaller amounts. So Today I'm going to start by talking about fat. So back in 1960s, uh, the low fat craze really started. That's when they did one research study and found somebody said, Dr. Keyes was his name. He said basically fat is what's kind of causing cardiovascular disease. So the government came in and said, okay, you need to stop eating fat. That's when all the overly processed low fat food craze really started. And one of the things they started adding to a lot of these to improve the flavor is high fructose corn syrup, okay? So instead of eating fat, we started eating more carbohydrates, more sugar, and more high fructose corn syrup. So fast forward to what, 60 years later, we are at an epidemic of obesity, uh, heart disease, and also diabetes, okay? So from overeating these carbohydrates. So we need to change our focus. We need to start getting those carbs down and start focusing on good carbs, which I will talk about here in a few weeks, but we need to start getting the fat into our diet, okay? So we need to start focusing on the right types of fat though. So, but fat, like I said, does not necessarily make you fat. When you eat fat, it takes a while for you to digest it and absorb it into your bloodstream. So it actually helps stabilize your blood sugar. It, so it's not gonna be spiking up and down all day. It also makes you feel more satisfied. So that's why after you eat a meal with fat in it, you feel more satisfied. You don't feel like you need something else. So we need to be getting it in there. It's also very nutrient and calorically dense. So it doesn't take very much, but, and that's why a lot of people have a tendency to go towards the carbs because they feel like they're eating more, but you're actually getting more nutrition from just a small tablespoon of say coconut oil than you are from a lot of other foods, especially when you're doing processed foods. So we wanna start focusing and getting that in. They also help us absorb those fat soluble vitamins. So A, D, E, and K, which are very important nutrients and I find so many people are deficient in. So we wanna have the fat to help us absorb those and get that out of our food. So um, another one is our brain needs fat. Our brain is 60% fat. One of the biggest fats in there is called omega-3s, which the best source that is fish oil. So if your brain has more fish oil, more omega-3s than other omega fats, your brain is going to work better. So we need to feed our brain these fats. Um, sorry, got off there. So, okay, so let's talk about what is a good fat and what is a bad fat. So the bad fats, the main two are gonna be your trans fats and your hydrogenated fats. These are ones that have been altered and changed. They're basically man-made. You do not find them in nature. They are both very inflammatory and hydrogenated fats especially can actually clog up your gallbladder and cause a lot of problems. So you're gonna be looking at the label, a big source of trans fat or hydrogenated fat, sorry, is peanut butter. <laughs> you would never think that peanut butter would have anything added to it. So this is where huge, huge, you have to read labels. You have to know what's in your food. So it's very simple and honestly, anymore you can find a good peanut butter. Now, you're gonna probably have to stir it. So that's the problem. I know my husband and my kids complain about our peanut butter because they have to stir it before they put it in the, and then we do have to keep it in the refrigerator. But it's just peanuts and sea salt. That's all that's in it and it tastes great. Uh, but like I said, it's a little bit more work, but it's worth it. So, but so yeah, just reading the label, like I said, look for anything that says trans fats will actually be under the nutrition. The tricky thing with trans fats is if it has less than one gram of trans fats per serving, they can actually put zero on the label. And if you've ever read labels, you gotta look at the serving size. It's amazing how small they'll make a serving size just to make it look better. So you gotta keep that in mind. If you're eating a lot of processed food, you could still be getting a significant amount of trans fats. Now the government did come out a few years ago and say that it need, everybody needed to start taking trans fats out of the food but we're still getting some. So um, another place from trans fats is whenever oil that is not stable, it, whenever it's heated past its smoke point, you will start getting some of those trans fats. So whenever you're getting fried food or anything like that, you're getting trans fats. That's probably one of the biggest sources of it. So we need to start cutting those things out and we need to start focusing on the good fats. What are the good fats? 
The best ones are going to be your plant fats. Any plant, I don't want to say any plant source. So some of those uh, vegetable oils are very, very highly processed. So some to stay away from. Canola oil is one that is very bad. Vegetable oil, just your regular vegetable oil, which is usually corn oil. Um, so those are ones we want to kind of keep out. So the ones we want to focus on more, coconut oil, so many benefits to coconut oil. It has MCTs, so medium chain triglycerides, which are great for the brain. It has something called lauric acid, which is actually an antifungal, can kind of help balance our guts. Um, and help reduce candida and other things. Uh, but it's also got plenty of that saturated fat in there. So now, saturated fat, another one is people are scared of. Now, yes, we don't want to way overdo it, but we need, still need some of that saturated fat in there for our health. Um, so, you know, adding coconut oil, cooking with it, sauteing with it. Um, I, if I do a smoothie, sometimes I'll add a tablespoon of coconut oil to my smoothie. So, uh, olive oil, another great one. So. Coconut oil is pretty stable, so you can actually cook at higher temperatures with it. Co um, olive oil is one that's not quite as uh, stable with high heats, so you're going to want to use it. I really reserve my olive oil for more salads, so making my salad dressings and things like that. Or if I cook something in the oven that I'm just kind of roasting some vegetables and I'm going to go ahead and mix it up with the vegetables, then I might go ahead and use it there also. But also using a variety. You know, I'm talking about several ones. We don't want to use just one. We want to use a variety because every single one of these has different benefits. So olive oil, it's higher in your omega-3s. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, and it's one that we do not find in the standard American diet. We need to start increasing that. So the next one, fish oil. Omega-3s from fish oil. Eating fish multiple times a week. If you're just not going to do that, that is one I recommend take a supplement. Just make sure you're taking a good quality supplement. Again, reading those ladles can get a little confusing, but we want to make sure we're getting plenty of the DHA and the EPA are the active ingredients. And there's some new ones kind of on there too. So um, what other ones? Avocado oil. So eating avocados is great because not only are you going to get those monounsaturated fats, but you're also going to get some magnesium. You're going to get some fiber. You're going to get a whole lot of benefit from eating those. Uh, so you can just throw some in your salad. Throw it in. I like to throw it in my smoothie. It makes it nice and creamy and gives it a great texture. I know you can make like, uh, there's some recipes for uh, ice cream with avocados. So that's a great thing to do too. Uh, butter. So butter is one that really got demonized. So they started switching everybody over to margarine. Guess what margarine is? It is trans and hydrogenated fats, the worst thing that you could eat. So if you are not eating real butter, go throw that margarine away right now. It's one of the worst things you can be doing. Butter has benefits. It's got vitamin K in it. It's got those fats. It's great for us. So we want to be eating butter. Now we want to get the best quality butter that we can. So like doing like a grass fed butter is always going to be good, better. Sorry. So when you get your butter, it shouldn't be white, it should be yellow. That's gonna be a better quality butter. So get the butter in there. Everybody loves butter, right? So, and the last kind of area, nuts and seeds. You know, they're great and easy to snack on, are a little easy to overeat. That is the biggest downside with nuts. So you gotta kind of watch your portion side. Usually about a fourth of a cup is the best, but you can add those to salads. Like I said, you can eat them as a snack. Getting them more raw, you don't want to get them roasted. If you're getting them roasted, just make sure and check what type of oils they are actually roasting them in. Um, make sure it's uh, just a better oil. You know, sometimes um, like walnuts, if they use walnut oil, walnut oil is not the best because it's not as stable. But I usually buy mine raw, so and then we soak and dehydrate them. So that's usually the best way to do it because then you can add your own salt to it and different things like that. So. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully this live was very helpful. Like I said, fat is just kind of a foundational thing. If you've watched my lives over the years, you know I've talked a lot about it. And it's just one of those things we really, really need to start getting into our diet. And you'll really notice a lot of improvement in your health. So, okay, guys. Have a great rest of your day.